Let's take a look at the Hall Effect sensor, including the Hall Effect principle, the latching sensor version, and interface circuit design. Here we have the Hall Effect sensor that's included in the MyRio starter kit. It's the Molexus US1881 EUA. This portion of the part number stands for the Hall Latch. This is a high sensitivity version. Here we have the temperature range. And here we have the package type, TO92, which is pictured here. This is also available in a surface mount package, giving you a lower profile. Now the Hall effect was discovered by Edwin Hall in 1879. He was an American physicist. And let's take a look at how this works. Take a small piece of material, a conductor or a semiconductor material that we call the Hall plate sometimes also called a Hall cell. Then I'm going to use an external current source to force a current through the Hall plate. Now inside the plate, we know that there's going to be an electron drift that's associated with this circulating current. Now I'm going to apply a magnetic field at right angles to the Hall plate. It's important to recognize that it must be perpendicular to the plate. Now it turns out that electrons moving in a magnetic field experience a Lorentz force, and that force is proportional to the direction of the current flow and the direction of the magnetic field. So officially we say that would be I cross B, and we use the right-hand rule to determine the cross product, and that tells us that we have a force in the right-hand direction. That means that as the electrons move through the Hall plate, they tend to congregate more towards the right side. Well, as they move off to the side, that exposes positive charges on the other side. And this charge displacement can be measured as a small voltage. If we see a non-zero voltage, that tells tells us that we have a magnetic field present, and the sign of the voltage tells us the direction. Are we looking at a north pole or a south pole? Now let's take a look at the functional diagram of the US 1881. We have a hall plate fed by a constant current source from our supply voltage down to ground. Take a look at amplifying that small voltage on the sides of the hall plate passing that through a Schmidt trigger, which gives us some immunity to noise and other crossover effects as we switch the magnetic field. And then finally, the 1881 has an open drain style output. That means we need to use an external pull-up resistor eventually. Hall effect sensors have a number of applications, including speed detection and position sensing. If you can put a magnet on it, you can sense it. Let's take a look at some of the technical details of our US 1881. It needs 3.5 to 24 volts. That means we need to use the MyRio plus five volt supply. In terms of the output level, again, assuming that we have an external pull up, when we subject the sensor to a magnetic flux density along this axis, with neutral position being in the middle, when we subject this to a south pole, once that south pole flux density becomes above the operating point, then the output is pulled low. And it will remain low even when we go back to neutral magnetic field we actually have to carry it back in the other direction where we subject it to a north pole. And that gets us back to what's called the release point. Now, once we exceed that release point in the negative direction, then the output transistor switches off. And that means our pull-up resistor tugs the output to the high level. Now, when we remove that, taking us back to neutral, the output actually stays in this high state. And it remains in the high state until we apply a magnetic field of sufficient strength in the opposite direction, that is back to a south pole. Now as you traverse this path, we see that was the path going towards a more north pole. 
Here's the path going towards a more south pole. And this characteristic loop is called a hysteresis loop. This is what we call latching behavior, and this is the behavior specifically of the US 1881. The output indicates the most recent pole that was applied, even when the magnetic field is removed. And that's a very important point to understand latching behavior. In contrast, other Hall sensors have switching behavior. For example, the US 5781 is like that. In this case, the transistor is off and the output would be pulled high when there is no magnetic field applied. We then apply a field such as a south pole, the transistor turns on, and that tugs the output low. When you remove the magnetic field, the transistor switches off again, and the output is pulled high. In this case, our graph of output versus magnetic flux density would look like this. Neutral is back here. And then we are strictly looking at just whether or not a south pole of sufficient strength is applied or not. A Hall switch is used for a proximity sensor. That is, you have a single pole. When it's close to the sensor, it turns it on. When it's far away from the sensor, it turns off. The latching behavior is used with strip and ring magnets, which have alternating north and south poles. Here's a third type of Hall sensor. It's a linear magnetic field sensor. For example, the analog devices AD22151 amplifies the voltage directly from the Hall plate and produces this as a proportional voltage in response to the strength of the applied magnetic field. All right, let's go back to the US1881 specifically and take a look at some numerical values for these specifications. Here I have typical values in the center for operating point and release point, as well as the hysteresis values. You notice that the values can vary considerably from device to device. All right, now that we have some idea about the Hall effect sensor itself, let's take a look at how we can interface it to my Rio. As I mentioned earlier, we need to use the 5 volt supply for the US1881. And to begin with, let's look at interfacing to the MXP connector. The digital input has a pull up of about 40K to 3.3 volts. That means we can simply do a direct connection from our sensor to the DIO. Fairly easy and simple. But the only thing remaining is the 0.1 microfarad power supply bypass capacitor, which is recommended in the data sheet for the US1881. Now, if you want to use the MSP side, bear in mind that this has a pull down resistor of about minus 40K internal. Because the 1881 has an open drain output, it can only pull down. That means we would need to use an external pull up resistor. Now this pull up can go either to the my Rio 3.3 volt or 5 volt supply. Since I'm already using the 5 volt supply, I'll just go ahead and use that same value. Let me emphasize also that we are, of course, connecting to the My Rio ground down here. Now, to get the appropriate size for the pull up resistor, we recognize that the digital I.O. has the 3.3 volt low voltage TTL standard, and that tells us that our device must produce a minimum of 2.4 volts to be recognized as a high level. Now everything that I just charted out here looks like a two resistor voltage divider. Here's the equation for the 5 volt source and that needs to be more than 2.4 volts. Solving that we find that the pull up needs to be less than 43k. 10K is a fairly convenient number, so I'll go ahead and recommend that value.